If you've been to a restaurant with kids, you know how difficult it can be. Trust me, been there, done that, have the t-shirt. Now, you try to keep them quiet so they don't disturb other diners, and it doesn't always work. Pre to prevent those types of situations, though, one restaurant in Toronto is taking the extreme step of refusing to serve kids under the age of 10. Is that going too far? As this episode of The Super Nanny so clearly showed, some kids can be difficult to manage in a restaurant. Often it leads to other people getting an unexpected dinner and a show. Because the babies are getting upset, we're gonna take it to go. In some cases, the parents just decide to leave. So to prevent that from happening, Adrak in Toronto's ritzy Yorkville neighborhood has decided to refuse to serve children under the age of 10. The restaurant says it communicates the policy to guests when making reservations and says that Adrak provides a more intimate setting for social, business and date nights. Though there are some exceptions like Mother's Day, but management points out their other location is open to families of all ages at all times. A number of reviews have expressed shock about the rule, but it's not clear that it's discriminatory. Vacation resorts across the world market themselves as adults only to deliver a certain experience to guests. And it would seem the owners of this restaurant want to do the same. Okay, so here's the question we've been putting to you. Is this a fair practice? 81.2% of you say yes it is. 18 0.8% of you say, no, it isn't. Let's bring back our debaters. You know what? Why don't we start with the host of the Nerd Dad podcast? That sounds like a novel idea. Joe, what do you think about this idea? I love this idea. What great marketing. Um, the only thing that would make it better is if they also had a daycare associated with it. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I mean, what, what better way than to show up and know you cannot bring your kids in? Sorry, kids. I'm going for dinner in a place you cannot be. <laughs> Uh, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. I wish there were more locations like this. <laughs> Kamal, what do you think? You know, I am thinking of my best friend who has a little uh, one-year-old uh, out in Rome in Italy. And she shares with me so often how Roman culture is just such that they love little bambinos. They love the kid having kids mm. everywhere at, you know, high-end restaurants, uh, all over you at cocktail bars, like just a part of life and culture. So I feel like when I think about the North American context and why she prefers to live in Europe is because of this openness to children and openness to having kids in public spaces that we don't necessarily see in North American contexts as much in higher-end restaurants or in different places like this. But that socialization, you know, I am, I do not have kids myself, so I'll leave it to you on this one, Joe. I'll trust your, your recommendation foundation there. Um, but that this is something that, you know, maybe we do need these spaces, but I'm also like at date night, like, isn't that like a 7, 8 p.m. start? Like, is this really something that, it, you know, we're going to have young kids in the restaurant at that time? Is it bedtime? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. What do you think about Kamal's um, idea there that it is a socialization, Joe? I mean, how else are kids supposed to get used to being in that situation? I think 100% agree. I think you have to take kids out to kind of educate them on how to behave in public. But uh, you can take them to Swiss Chalet. You can take them to Jack Astor's. You can take them to McDonald's. <laughs> There's a million restaurants that are okay with a screaming child um, in, in their setting and in their venue. And we have one example in Toronto where it's not okay. There are other examples too, but you have to be 18 or older to get into them. I can't bring a child right. into those locations. I don't see why it's a difference. Let, let the restaurant have the rules. It's there to protect people yeah. like Kamal from my children. That's why they're there. <laughs> it's a great idea. 10 out of 10, no yeah. notes. Yeah. <laughs> Kamal, I, I guess one of my questions, though, is, you know, when you speak to your friend in Rome and that sort of experience, you know, is it just so normalized or, or are they just better parents than us in North America? 
<laughs> no, it's uh, it's certainly more normalized. You know, when I when I go to visit her, I notice just this openness to having kids in in public spaces and places. And, and mm -hmm. you know, also when we think of it from a where do moms get to go with their kids kind of perspective, I know Adrek might not be the best example for this because it is the one example in Toronto. But maybe this is an invitation to a bigger conversation of what are the spaces that new moms and moms with kids get to go to feel a little bit normal with their little person, um, and how do we sort of yeah. Uh, and more spaces for young moms to just exist and be themselves in the world. And I know that that's something that this friend of mine in Italy really, really appreciates about Italian culture. It's interesting. As I said, if you leave a comment on X, hey, we might read it on air. So here are a couple of the comments Joel put to you. If parents would control their kids, this wouldn't be an issue. That was one comment. And they said if they're being disruptive, they can be forced to leave. But if they're sitting quietly and behave like everyone else, uh, this shouldn't be done. What do you think about those comments? I mean, they're both right. <laughs> like, I mean, if <laughs> in theory, if you have a very well-behaved child, hats off to you. Amazing. If you can get through a full, elegant meal without a temper tantrum or food ending up on the floor, that's amazing. But I think that's way more of the exception rather than the rule. Um, and I just think that businesses are allowed to put in place rules that they think are going to help with their dining experience. And to the point mm -hmm. of the, like, even the video entry, this is not foreign. We have hotels that con uh, feature kind of adult only situations. It's, it's a nothing burger for people who want to be upset. The restaurant next to them yeah. probably will accept you. Go there. Yeah. And, and they even, and they even say, uh, Kamal, that their other location is open to families at all times. Um, but what do you think of the fact that there are different places, you know, resorts, as Joe had said, um, that are adults only, vacation experiences, and so why not just a restaurant? Yes, I, I am in the in the camp of this is not something for us to get totally up in arms about. It's an we get to have this invitation <laughs> to a larger conversation as well of also the isol social isolation between families, you know, like there are some cultures and the Jumpy culture is one of them where we we raise our kids in community. And so when we're overlooking mm -hmm. at kids and we're being like, if they if they behaved better, if they did this better, it's like, where's the community element of us uh, sort of co-living with one another? And that's something that I think we're, we're missing a little bit. But again, I think a lot of the one-star reviews came from people who either didn't fully read the policy because the restaurant says it's it's on our it's on our booking app. It's it's you know something right. we check in with folks about. The one-star reviews were coming from some folks who who came and were like, well, "You didn't tell me," and it's like, "No, they told you. You just didn't fully read it." So yeah. I, you know, the extreme result in that situation. But if going into it, you know, yeah, I'll just go to the other location, take my family there, and know that it's more of a family-friendly environment. Last question to both of you. Joe, I know you hope, but do you see more restaurants doing this? No. I think it's a bad business practice in general. I really do. I think in general, you want as many people in the door as possible. So I don't think mm -hmm. anyone's going to really do this. I think this is a novelty. Kamal, what do you think? I would say that this is like, there's no bad publicity sort of situation. We all now know the name of Otherick as a restaurant and that it's a Michelin, you know, on the Michelin list or whatever that is for Toronto. So they kind of came out of it winning a little bit, even though those one star reviews are probably bringing down that overall average, but I'm sure they'll bounce back pretty quick. Yeah. And again, if you don't like that location, you can bring your kids to their other location, apparently. Okay.